I look ghostly. Okay. <gasps> I just realized because it's looking right at me. I forgot. <laughs> my primer. I use poor professionals. Welcome back everybody. I'm Tassie with Tassie Eats and today I'm doing something a little different. We all know I'm not a beauty guru on YouTube. I specialize in food. However, my younger sisters, they actually asked this of me so I wanted to do a video for them. When I was out in California, I actually did their makeup and they absolutely loved it. So they asked me to do a full face tutorial for them. Now the makeup I'm going to do today, this is a full face. So this is not something I would do on a regular basis. Um, I don't remember the last time I did it because it's been so long. <laughs> like normally for my videos, when I'm gonna do filming, I actually, my makeup's like 15 minutes, I'm done. Because I don't really do my eyes or anything like that. It's really just your foundation, your highlighter, a bit of contouring, blush, highlight, and I put my eyelashes on. <laughs> so it's like really quick. So I'm gonna do a tutorial really on makeup here. Just what my routine is and what I did for my sister so that they can re do it themselves when they are at home. <laughs> so thanks for watching you guys. All right, so what's really important is that you always lotion up your face. So I do a mix. Sometimes when I'm lazy, <laughs> my favorite go-to it is Aveeno. <laughs> I have to use Aveeno because Aveeno is the best lotion I've ever had on my face. <laughs> And um, I know Aveeno might sound a little extreme for a lot of people, but I have really, really dry skin and my skin's not that sensitive. So when I put on Aveeno, it's like moisturized all day. But Aveeno, it is body lotion. Now the other one that I use when I want to be fancy, I do have the Elizabeth Arden. This is the visible difference. It's very hydrating for my skin. And again, I have really dry skin, so I have to use something really intense. And then on top of that, I also use the Rose Gold Elixir. So this is an oil or a serum. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with my lotion. And for today, I'll do the Elizabeth Arden. And I just get a little bit, literally there's nothing on my face. I just washed it. So I could feel it drying up already. And it's really not gonna matter like what kind of lotion you use, just use something that works for your skin type. But like, I like to do people's makeup and there's nothing worse than that, them having really, really dry skin and it comes through in the foundation. So always just lotion up, you guys. Lotion, lotion, lotion. All right, so the next step, I'm gonna use a rose gold elixir. And you guys do not have to use a serum. Honestly, I use it just because I have such dry skin. And I've been using a lot of this. I think I'll get another one. And typically, I just put some on my forehead, on my cheeks, and then I go to town. All right, so I'm just gonna wait for this to dry down a bit and then I'll move on to my next step. All right, so everything's dry down a bit. Now I move on to foundation. For the foundation, so I do something a little different. I always have a little Petri dish here and I mix my foundation. Now, I didn't always used to do this, but then I found that my favorite is the Revlon Color Stay. So this is for the normal to dry skin, so the cap is typically clear. If you guys ever get this one and it's like a darkish kind of tinge to it, it's kind of almost black, but it's see-through, that one's more for oily skin, so use that one. Now, I also use NARS. And the color for the Revlon that I use here, this is 180. And then this one is medium three for NARS. So the NARS, if you notice, it's a bit darker. Typically I use the Revlon as like the base because I love the formula in here. And for the NARS, it's very really liquidy. Um, I've done makeup with just the NARS alone, but I prefer the base of the this one here. So I, I'll pump a few of the NARS in there as well. Now with that, I also use the RS, RCMA. This is basically a powder, like when you bake and stuff. It's, um, some people, you can have the Laura Mercier one. This one I use, and it's only because when I bought it, I didn't know about the Laura Mercier, and they give you like three of these bottles, and it's like a lot. So <laughs> I have to use this up first. All right, so what I typically do is I actually mix my foundation with this, and the reason for that, um, what brand is it now? I think it's Urban Decay. They released this Velvet Dream thing, which is basically one of these powder forms that you mix 
into your actual foundation. But it, it, the same effect happens if you use just a regular one as well. So you don't wanna put too much. If you put too much, your foundation ends up being cakey. So you just wanna put like a little bit here and it's gonna be kinda of, ah! I'm not a beauty guru. Okay, so <laughs> if you guys can see with the shadow here, it's just, um, I only put in like a very, very little amount in here. So I just use that, all right. And this is just a drugstore brand, you guys. Don't buy it at the drugstore. It's very expensive there. I bought this at Target for like $9.99. At the drugstore, is like 15 bucks. All right, and then the NARS, and you always wanna shake up the NARS because it's so liquidy. And then I just do two pumps. Whenever I do people's makeup, if their tone is darker than me, I'll add more. And if they're lighter, et cetera, you don't have to add as much. So typically I just do two to three pumps. Um, in the summertime, my skin gets a lot darker. And then I just take one of my eyeshadow things here. I don't even know what it is. I don't even know what brand it is. All I'm using is the end here just to mix it. That's why. So you just want to mix the powder into your um, foundations here. So it's not like super grainy. All right, just like that. And the leftover on this, I'll put it on my beauty blender. And then you just put your foundation on. And I do prefer a beauty blender versus like a brush. You know when everybody was crazy about those Artiste brush or whatever, the $600 ones with the oval circle? Um, a lot of people were really crazy about it in the beauty world. I never bought it. And my favorite, it is a beauty blender. I've ha I have a version of that brush though, the Artiste. And it's not the $600 one, it's like a knockoff, but it's, um, it works well. It's just a pain washing them and cleaning them. Whereas it's a lot easier where I find with my beauty blender. And I really, really love the Revlon Color Stay because literally, you guys, it will stay on for 24 hours. You know, like when you go out, you get drunk and you knock out <laughs> and you forget to take your makeup off. And like when I wake up and I go eat pho with my friends the next day, it's like I have a full face of makeup still on. <laughs> All right, and I am a person who likes to cover up my eyes with the foundation. I know some people don't, but typically it's because they already have uh, makeup on their eyes. But, um, I don't know. I like to do it. Okay. All right, that's really it. So, uh, from here, though, I always move into the highlighting and the contour. So, again, you guys, just take note, the contour part. Um, I don't typically do this step. For my sisters, I did. But uh, the contour, this is the Laura Mercier one, and this is the cream contour. I always start off with the cream one, and then I move in with a powder. So this is when you're doing a full face, and the reason why you would do both is it lasts longer, your contour. And I'm really, really afraid of the Laura Mercier because it's like lipstick, putting lipstick on you. It's very intense. I'm actually used to doing the um, Anastasia one, but that Anastasia, it's drier. The formula is a lot more drier. Typically, you have to add a serum to the Anastasia to get it to be more bendable, blendable. So be careful if you're using the Laura Mercier one. <laughs> All right, so this is a Kabuki brush by Soho. Uh, so what I do, and the reason why I like this one because of how it's like thin like this, is not a round circle. And typically I just grab the contour medium too. And I want to be really, really careful because it picks up a lot. All right. So uh, for the contour, I always think of it as three layers here. You, the bottom layer will always be your contour, your dark one. And then I'll always do blush and then I'll always do highlighter. So really there's like a line right here. So I just follow that line. <laughs> I'm so scared. Seriously, like the first time I put this on, it was intense and it freaked me out because I don't like it to be that intense. And there's a line on my nose. And this brush here, I really don't use it to blend it because I have a beauty blender. But um, you, you can though use this brush to blend it as well. 
I suppose. Nothing wrong with that. Now we're going to do it underneath your jawline. And typically for my forehead, I always use the powder. I don't use the cream. Um, you know, people, they always say if you have a really big forehead, you want to darken up more of it. Whereas if you have a smaller forehead, you just want to darken just a little bit and then have this part be lighter. Uh, and so I have a dark beauty blender for whenever I do my uh, darker contour. And I'm just going to blend this out. And I know some people, they like to put the highlighter and the contour at the same time. I like to do it separately just so I can control if I need more highlighter to come into the contour because I went a little too crazy. You know, so <laughs> that's what I typically do. Okay. There you have it. All right, so now I will go, I always do cream first, okay? Don't do the powder on top of it. You wanna finish all of your creams first. So for a highlighter, I either use the NARS, and the NARS here is actually two shades lighter than my foundation here. And then I also, my favorite though, it is the Age Rewind. This is by Maybelline. This one's my absolute favorite, only because it blends so well. It's, it makes my skin so soft looking and supple. And this is fine. But I found, I bought this first and I, I tried it for like a year. And then I decided to just try a different highlighter. And I don't like this one as much as this one. I also have the Amazonian Tarte. It's like, not Tarte, it's the Amazonian Clay Marajuku Oil Highlighter thing. I don't really like that one either. So this one has always been my go-to favorite. And for the highlight, I always just go underneath my eyes like so. along the line of my nose, my forehead. And I have rosacea, so I always just put a little bit here. My rosacea is pretty light, but um, it's there, so I always try to cover it up as well. And do go at it. So now you take your regular beauty blender, not the dark one I just had, and you're just blending it out. And I always cover my eyes because I don't on a regular basis, I don't do eyeshadow and everything like that on my eyes. And this is to keep the skin tone all one color. <laughs> but I understand if you don't because you have makeup up there. All right, all right. so now that we're done, now I'm done with like really all my liquids, so now I'll move to my powders. And in another Petri dish, I'll add some more of this. And again, this is just your RCMA, it's, it's your no color powder. And this is for the baking part. Now baking is really not necessary, but I know a lot of people who bake on a regular basis, and that's a lot of work. But <laughs> it really keeps your makeup on all day in your highlighted areas. So I just take a dry beauty blender now and I just put it into this peach dish, my powder, and then you just grab some and then you just put it wherever you highlight it. And typically you leave it there for like 10 to 15 minutes while you get the rest of your makeup ready. The baking actually came from drag queens and drag queens, they would used to always bake before their shows. So cause you know, really to highlight and show their makeup here. And with the baking, really what it does is that it's supposed to be that your own body heat heats up and it bakes that color or your foundation and your highlighter underneath it. 
I may have gone a little crazy there. <laughs> and this you just buy off of Amazon. Um, or else you can go to the beauty stores and they have it too. And I don't really bake on my nose because I'm going to put a highlighter there. But I might as well. <laughs> There. And then of course I bake it down here as well. And my makeup's gonna be fly today. I need I need to go a lot of places. So <laughs> make it worth it that I'm doing a full face. Just walk around, I got no nothing to buy. <laughs> Alright? And then you leave this on and you go and do something else or you move to other parts of your makeup typically. Alright, now that I look crazy. I'm going to move on to my brows. My brows really take this part with a grain of salt, you guys. I am not a pro at doing eyebrows. <laughs> so I have real hair for my eyebrows. And typically all I do is I kind of just darken it and I follow the natural line. I don't make anything fancy. Um, I don't do the whole put another lighter color around it to really sharpen that look. I don't do that. So <laughs> what I use is I use the Revlon Color Stay. And this is another drugstore brand. Uh, there is the Anastasia one as well for this, but I always prefer this one. So it has the regular, you know, so you twist it and the, it comes out here. And then it has a spoolie at the end as well. So all I do, you guys, again, typically I start at the bottom of my eyebrows and I just draw a darker line here and I just go to the edge. Now I don't do the top part here. I actually move in a little and then I just follow that line. And then I just kind of color it in. And the reason why I don't darken the top here is because I then use the spoolie, the spoolie part, and I actually brush it. And that's how it fills in the front. Because I don't want like a huge block right there suddenly of color. It just it looks really weird to me. Dun dun dun. dun. Pretty simple, huh? I really don't know why people take a long time doing eyebrows. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Um, I have friends who will take hours to get ready and they look the same. And I'm like, what did you do? Like, uh, I wonder if it's their eyebrows. Like my sister, she will take forever on her eyebrows. But she had shaved all of it off at one point so she had to draw in the whole thing. Now though, her real eyebrows have grown in again. She's so lucky. <laughs> yeah, and that's really all that I do for my eyebrows. Um, my ends here, they are a little bit more sparse. So I just color it in. That's about it. Yeah. Ta-da! All right, I'm going to do my other one now. <laughs> Again, a dark line. Mm -hmm. I wish I could see it better or like closer. I can just fix that. Alright. I'm done. <laughs> and I really love this one. It is 24 hours, so it stays on a very, very long time. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and wipe off my baking powder here. And you just brush it right off your face. That's it. I 
I look ghostly. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and put my eyelashes on now. I'm almost done. Okay. So next comes the actual powder for the contouring. And I use the NARS brush here. I don't know what this is called. But, um, you know, it kind of looks similar to that Kabuki here. They're thinner. And uh, I also have a thicker, dark contouring one as well. This is one of the real techniques. So, for my Anastasia, I've used a lot. But I just typically use a blend of both of the colors down here. I don't really use the middle color. <laughs> And with my contour, I always do like the three here. So I always do my forehead as well. This is the dark contour. I'm gonna go to my temples. Okay. And you don't have to go too intense with the powder because you already have that cream underneath it. All right, so next, what I typically do, and just know, you guys, if it's ever too intense, let's say your contour is more intense than you like, I always have a regular brush that typically I use for the white powder here or the lighter color. And you can grab some, and then you just kind of like go into it and just really to lighten it up so it's not as intense if you don't want that sharp of a look. All right, so it's a bit more intense there. All right, not as intense, I'm sorry. All right, so the next, I use Tarte Amazonian Clay. This is their, uh, it's called Fearless. This is their uh, blush that I use. This is another Real Techniques brush. I don't know the name of. <laughs> it's a blush brush, you guys. And you want to put it, layer it right above where you just did your dark contour. Don't do it too high. You know how they always had the apples, you know? Yeah, mm, I don't really do that. I just do, <laughs> I just follow the same line that I did, but it's right above, it sits right above my actual contour line. But it's probably because that's what works for my face. I don't really know, but typically this is what I do for other people too when I do their makeup. Um, because to me, I, on, on top of this is where I put my highlighter. All right. So for the highlighter, this is what I use. This is the glow kit by Anastasia. All right. And typically you can use like a fan, which I actually have a million brushes. You guys, I have a ton of makeup, but this is my favorite lately. It's another real techniques. And I don't know the name of it, but it's uh, for this, the glow here, I actually use the Summer and the Moonstone. In the summertime when my skin gets darker, I, di I do also mix in the Tourmaline, Tourmaline. All right, so I just grab some of each, knock it off, and bam. A little bit on your nose, okay? Uh, some people, they use a finger. I've used the finger before and I hate it. It was too intense. Uh, it looked crazy. So highlighted side, not highlighted side. Can you see the difference? <laughs> All right. Some people go really crazy with highlighter. They put it like all sorts of different places. I'm good. All right, my shirt is officially dirty now from <laughs> my powder. Uh, and then all the last thing I do for, uh, for my eyes, I just, this is the Tartiest Tarte. Uh, this is the one where it has like a dry cream 
here and then this is all ah the liquid as well that just marked me this is like 24 hours it stays on forever i better get this off hang on here <laughs> literally it will stay on forever okay during my cooking video next time you guys might see this mark on me i actually have an oil-based remover so i can just go and use that all my makeup where did i get that anyway <laughs> oh my god this is why i don't do beauty <laughs> all right um all of my makeup here it's like 24 hour forever you can get me wet I will come out and have my makeup still on so you do need to really take your time removing this later on all right so all I do for under my eyes I don't ever I just line my waterline but I don't bring it to the corners because I feel like it closes up my eyes a lot so really I just use a, I put it on here and I go a little bit oh a little bit past halfway So just like that. And it's really just to define my lower lashes because I don't put on mascara because I have no real eyelashes. So <laughs> even if I did put mascara on, you couldn't tell. <laughs> all right. Now the last and most important step, because of all the powder that you did and the foundation, I always take like a napkin or something and I wipe my lips off because some people like the foundation on their lips because they're going to put on a different color of lipstick. I always use Burt's Bees. Burt's Bees, you guys. So, <laughs> Burt's Bees is my lipstick. I'm old. I don't really care for lipstick anymore. I have a million different types of lipsticks and all this matte stuff. I don't use them. Very, very rarely will I ever use them. But um, on a regular basis, I use chapstick. Burt's Bees. All right. Now I am the Tassie you guys see at the beginning of every video. <laughs> so this is, again, you guys, a full makeup face. Um, again, I don't do this much typically. The, what I really don't do is the powder of the, of the baking. And I don't always use my cream contour. My cream contour is more of a, it's the beginning of the day and this has to last until past midnight that night. And so I don't do touch-ups on my makeup throughout the day. It just stays on. So <laughs> All right, so that's really it uh, for my sisters. If you guys have any questions, just message me. Again, you know, like I grew up with drugstore brands because that's all I could afford when I was younger. And I've been wearing makeup since I was in the fifth grade. Uh, I remember my teacher was like, you have eyeliner on? And I was like, yes. And she was like, I'm going to tell your mom. And I'm like, who do you think bought it for me? <laughs> so, yes, I've been wearing makeup a very, very long time. Um, I definitely believe in a lot of drugstore brands, but I also use a lot of name brand stuff. Only because, you know, I've played around with a lot of different types of makeup and I found what I really like. So this is just my staples that I always carry with me if I'm going to be traveling or I use on a regular basis. I have a ton of makeup in my makeup table. I have a huge thing. I actually gave a bunch of makeup to my sisters when I went over to California. But um, this is, these are my staples and these are the ones I always replenish. <gasps> I just realized because it's looking right at me. I forgot. <laughs> my primer I use poor professionals this is my primer you guys all right the reason why I forgot it is because I don't use it on a regular basis um this is a great primer you guys but I feel like it's made for people who have a lot of big pores like I don't have any big pores so when I put it on I don't really know what it did for me <laughs> I feel like it doesn't do anything and typically I just focus on the lotion and then I just put it on now for a primer, I also like Ulta's brand. It's literally just the Ulta brand of their matte primer. That one I really, really like and I gave my other copy of that to my sisters in California. But then the pore professionals, this is great for people who do have pores on their face, like, like big ones that's noticeable. I don't have that, so it doesn't do anything for me, but I have it, I use it sometimes. <laughs> All right, you guys, thanks for watching.